what on earth is an S curve? Is it a curve with the shape of an S? What kind of curve is an S curve anyways? Why project managers are so interested in seeing S curves in their project reports? What's the use of S curves in projects? These were my questions when I first exposed to the term S curves in projects. I didn't know the use of S curves until I started populating S curves in every single project, cost, and schedule that I issued. I realized how this simple graphical tool uh, is useful in briefing stakeholders on understanding the project status and trends in a very quick and intuitive manner. Hello everyone, I am Shore Gorbani, I'm the founder and director of Project Control Academy, an academy for learning and enhancing your skills in project controls. In this training, I'm going to open up the concept of S-curves for you so you are clear on the philosophy behind S-curve, why it's called an S-curve, what's the use of S-curves in projects and much more. Now going back to my earlier question, what is an S-curve? What is your understanding of S-curve? Is it the first time you're hearing this term? If not, what do you think of the S-curve without knowing anything about it? Okay, let me uh, define S-curve for you so, so you are more clear on what you're talking about here. So S-curve is a graphical uh, display of cumulative data that is plotted against time. And that cumulative data here can be anything such as cost, man hour, quantity, progress, different type of project informations that you want to plot against time. And don't forget S-curve is a cumulative uh, plot, cumulative data that you plot uh, against time. And you may find S-curve uh, as other names, uh, you might, they might call it S-plot or um, another name cumulative distribution chart or velocity diagram or uh, in error value management we call it performance measurement baseline or PMB. So don't be surprised if you name it uh, other things in projects that you have been working on but the bottom line is you are drawing an S-curve in projects. Now, why the name is an S-curve? Is it in the shape of an S? The answer is yes. S-curve form a shape of S in most projects. So the S shape, the shallow S, is a typical shape of a cumulative um, a graph that you will see in projects. And the reason is if I uh, just plot the incremental data in a project for you so you understand why the cumulative data uh, shows like an S-curve is because in most projects you start very slowly in the project and then you ramp up during the project execution and then you ramp down as you close out the project and deliver most of the deliverables and uh, basically finishing the project. So you will see that as a typical uh, shape um, in most projects. So if I convert this to a cumulative curve, then that would be something like the S curve that you see here on the orange uh, bar here. So that's why um, it creates an S shape uh, for you uh, based on the essence of the projects. But having said that, don't be surprised if your S-curve, uh, the cumulative curve that you draw in a project, does not look like an S-shape. Um, the shape of an S-curve, you know, depends on the nature of your project, what kind of contract you are working on. And depending on the project, you might see different types of S-curve. One of the most popular ones that you will see is front-loaded S-curves. And as you can see here in this graph, um, uh, most resources are consumed early on in, that, in the project and then you're ramping down very quickly toward the end and middle, but most of the load is at the beginning of the project. Examples uh, would be uh, the projects that are accelerated early on, uh, so something happens and you're just accelerating that project quickly early on, you put on a lot of resources at the beginning of the project to finish the project based on the contract requirement. So then you will end up uh, a curve like a dome, mini dome, half dome, rather than an S shape uh, because you have a front loaded plan in your project. Another example would be uh, for repetitive 
projects uh, you know something that you have a project that you have done over and over and over again so you are quite familiar with that so you don't need that much of learning curve at the beginning of the project so you know what to do so you just put resources early on and finishing the job as quickly as you can so that's another example of front loaded plans that you will see in a project um, another example would be for an urgent quick repair of a damage early on in the project that you need to um, you know uh, have resources to repair that damage so you will put a lot of resources early on uh, to to repair that so that would be another example of a front loaded S curve and if you are drawing a cost information, um, uh, the mobilization cost or uh, you know the deposits that you put for some procurement items, then that would have the tendency of creating a, an S shape uh, for your cash flow curve as well. So these are some examples of the project that you may, you may see uh, forming an S um, front loaded S curve. But having said that, make sure that you if you end up with uh, a front loaded S curve, evaluate first of all whether you have resources available early on uh, in the project to execute your project like this. And second, is your plan valid? Um, is this the project that you are really putting a lot of resources early on in the project um, execution? So you have to validate your plan and validate the available resources that you are going to, that they are going to execute your project. So make sure you validate this uh, before accepting this S-curve as your plan for the project. Another form of S-curve that you will see which is completely opposite of this curve is a backloaded S-curve. So as you can see this one starts very slowly here on the project and then it ramp up toward the end of the project. Um, and examples of uh, this type of backloaded S-curves would be uh, complex projects, you know, uh, projects that you need a lot of planning and design early on. So it takes a lot of learning curve basically before you jump into execution and start executing the job. Uh, so that would be an example of a backloaded S-curve that you may face. Just like front-loaded S-curve, make sure that you validate uh, the basis of your plan and the availability of your resources. And again, you have to question the backloaded or front-loaded S-curves in projects to make sure your plan is right. So to give you a perspective of these three curves, um, I put them all in one graph for you so you can clearly understand the difference between the front-loaded, back-loaded and a typical S-curve. And here is the, the curve, uh, three of them in one curve. As you can see, that's the front-loaded S-curve, kind of very sharp curve, as I like to call it, a half-dome curve. This is the back-loaded curve, again, uh, it just uh, starts very slow and then ramp, ramp up toward the end. But the green one is the typical S-curve, kind of a shallow S-type uh, curve that you will see in most projects. So uh, again, uh, make sure that you validate your plan for both front-loaded and back-loaded curves before you accept them as a baseline or a plan moving forward for comparison. So these were different uh, shapes of S-curve that you will see in a project depending on the nature of your project. Now the question might be what kind of information uh, should I plot in an S-curve? First of all, the x-axis would always show your time and the time, uh, the intervals uh, would be based on your project reporting and updating cycle. So if you are uh, doing your updating, uh, project updating or reporting every month, then it would be on a monthly basis kind of months. Or it can be bi-weekly or weekly. So um, the shorter these time intervals, um, you know, the smoother your S-curve would be and the easier for uh, analyzing the trends in your project. The y-axis always shows accumulative data and the accumulative data can be different data that you want to show and plot in a project. It can be man over cost, FTE, progress, quantity, resources, different type of information that you want to analyze in a project. 
Uh, but among all of those, the three most common type of S-curves that you will see in projects are these three. You may see a cost S-curve, which is basically uh, your cost uh, versus time. And this curve is very popular for um, cash flow curves, the kind of um, showing um, uh, the spending of your budget over time, how you are going to spend your budget over time or cash flow curve. Another popular S-curve that you will use in projects is in man over or FTE, full-time equivalent curve, basically showing the available resources that you have over time, um, either the head counts or man over. Again, that's very popular. You will see that a lot as well. Another type of S-curve that you will see in project is quantity S-curve. So uh, here would be a quantity of material equipment or something that you want to measure against time. And that's a a very good um, curve for comparison, comparing what you were planning in terms of quantity and what you have actually uh, accomplished or let's say installed an equipment or something. So that would be a very good comparison curve that you will use um, in projects. So these are the three most common typical S-curves that you will use in most of the project control reports um, that you will basically see out there. Now, going back to my earlier question, uh, what is uh the use of S-curves, uh, why uh, project managers are so interested in seeing these S-curves in their project reports. That leads us uh, to the next topic uh, in the S-curve series training on what is the common use and utilization of S-curves, which I'm going to cover in the next episode of Project Control Mastery. So stay tuned for the next episode. So I will show you different uh, ways of using S-curves in project reports. And uh, with that, if you have any question or comment about this episode, please make sure that you jog them down below so I can assist you. I hope uh, this uh, quick uh, training um, helped you to better understand the concept of S-curve and the philosophy behind S-curve. Uh, I hope it added value. If you like this training, please uh, give me a high five by uh, hitting the like button. And if you know someone would benefit from this, uh, training, uh, please don't hesitate to share it with your connections or your colleagues. So until the next episode of Project Control Mastery, where I'm going to open up the concept of S-curve even more for you, do your best in everything that you do, my friend. Commit to excellence in your work and make a difference. Hello, this is Shore. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you continue to get updates every time that I release new training for you. Simply hit the subscribe button and you will be all set. If you have ever wondered uh, or wanted to learn how to become distinguished for your ability to control and lead projects to successful completion, I'd like to give you something special that I'm sure you're going to love. I have developed a series of training videos on earned value management absolutely for free. Yes, for free. If you have ever wondered what earned value management is and how it can assist you in understanding the true status of your projects, make sure that you watch the EVM training series that I have put together for you. Just click on the link uh, below this post or go to projectcontroltraining.com forward slash EVM free training and then enter your name and email so I can email you the training video series. Thanks again for tuning in everyone. Until next time that I see you, do your best in everything that you do and make a difference.